Good morning and welcome to worship this morning at St. Paul Lutheran Church in Hubbard Lake. It's truly a joy to be with you today, not only as we gather for worship on this day of Pentecost, but it's also very exciting because today uh, signifies our return from pandemic exile. Uh, today, um, as you are gathering together with us online, um, the sanctuary um, will also be now filled with people as we come back together to gather for worship, which we are very excited about. That being said, uh, we want to make you aware of uh, the fact that online worship will continue. And for now, it's going to remain on Sunday mornings at 930. So if you are a unable to join us for our in-person worship gathering, we would love for you to continue joining us here online either through Facebook, our website, or YouTube. And we hope that you will take advantage of that worship opportunity. Um, again, um, as always, we want to encourage you as you join us online uh, to welcome the, uh, the fellow worshipers that will be joining us and to share the peace of Christ with them. Go ahead and comment, um, uh, like, um, and even share this post uh, with your friends and family. As we begin our time of worship together this morning, we do so with our opening hymn, Today Your Mercy Calls Us. We make our beginning, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! Alleluia! Let us go to our Father and confess our sin. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought word and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
we justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson for this Pentecost Sunday comes from Numbers chapter 11, beginning at verse 24. Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered seventy men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him, and took some of the spirit that was on him, and put it on the seventy elders. And as soon as the spirit rested on them, they prophesied. But they did not continue doing it. Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad, and the other named Medad. And the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. And so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the assistant of Moses from his youth, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them? And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading for this morning comes from Acts chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting and divided tongues as of fire appeared to them, and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, 
Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging, belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocked, saying, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea, and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my Spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This too is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel this Pentecost Sunday comes from John chapter 7. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive, for as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Together, let us confess our faith boldly in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning. How are you guys this morning? Good. Excellent. And I hope all of you guys at home are doing well if you are joining us today. Today is Pentecost. Pentecost. Pentecost, right. And that, that means 50 days. Pentecost. Yes, sit down, buddy. Pentecost always takes place 50 days after Easter. And Pentecost is the day of the church's birthday. It's the day that the church, the, uh, the early church, the Christian church, started. Recently, um, it was Samuel's birthday, and Samuel turned two, right? And uh, we celebrated with a birthday cake, and we sang him happy birthday, and we did all of those kinds of fun things. Well, guess what? The church also has a birthday, and it's today. And so we're celebrating that birthday, and... On the day of the, of the church's birthday, that's when the Holy Spirit came to God's people. Now, each and every one of us, we are a part of that. And guess when that happened? When do you think that we became a part of the church? Church. When did that happen? I'll give you a hint. It's over there. When we got baptized, right? And on the day of your baptism, you guys were all, um, and your parents were all given a candle. And that candle looks like this, okay? It's got a baptismal font on it and a shell and a dove, which represents the Holy Spirit. And that candle was lit to remind you and to remind your parents um, that the light of Christ is inside of you, that Jesus is with you, and that the Holy Spirit is with you. 
And um, some people, they light these candles every year on their baptismal birthday to remember that they are a part of Christ's church. And they celebrate it just like they would on their birthday. And what's exciting about that is that in baptism, the Holy Spirit was given to you guys, right? And now you guys have faith. You believe in Jesus, right? Do you believe in Jesus? Yeah. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. The only way that you're able to say that is because you have faith in Jesus. Can you please sit down, Marcus? Thank you. The only way that you're able to say that is because you have faith in Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is with you. And the Holy Spirit's with you not just on the day of your baptism, but every day. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to go to God and we're going to thank him for that. Can you blow this out? Blow. There you go. We're going to go to God and we're going to thank him for giving us the spirit and for bringing us into his church. Okay, let's fold our hands. Let's bow our heads. Fold our hands. Dear Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for bringing us into your church and for saving us by Jesus' death and resurrection. Help us to share Jesus with everyone around us. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, you have a fantastic rest of the week. See you later. Bye-bye. mercy and peace be unto you from God our Heavenly Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and from the Holy Spirit who enters into our hearts and makes us holy. This morning we will be looking at the lesson from the book of Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we rejoice in this time together as we are able to hear your word proclaimed, and we ask, Heavenly Father, that this word would touch into the depths of our hearts, and call us, Heavenly Father, to share the message of Jesus, him crucified and risen with those around us. Equip us, Lord, with the gift of faith that was given to us at our baptism. Strengthen that faith and keep us ever mindful that you have called us to sow the seeds of the gospel, and you are the one who make them grow. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. 
So today is the day of Pentecost. It is the birthday of the church. It is the day in which the Holy Spirit came upon the followers of Jesus. Now, oftentimes, the Holy Spirit doesn't get quite the same type of recognition that the Father and the Son does. People aren't usually busting down the church doors to come and worship on the day of Pentecost, like they might be at Christmas or Easter. For many people, Pentecost may even go unnoticed. The Holy Spirit, we might even say, tends to be on the more quiet side of the Trinity. There isn't all the pomp and the circumstance that we might see with some of the other persons of the Trinity, because the Holy Spirit is doing his job. He's pointing us back to Jesus. This is his role, in fact, is to point us to Christ. And with this in mind, we confidently confess in the words of the Creed that it is the Holy Spirit who creates, sustains, and strengthens our faith in Christ for the forgiveness of sins. And so because the Holy Spirit is always pointing us back to Jesus, it appears that he actually disappears into the background. However, on this day especially, the Holy Spirit lets us know that yes, he is around, yes, he is working and active. He is present in the lives of his people and within the world. As we look at this text today from Acts chapter 2, there is this sound, and it is the sound of a great rushing wind, and we see or we hear about these tongues of fire that appear over the heads of the apostles. In fact, it tells us that they, the apostles, were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They were able to speak languages that they had never spoken before because of the Spirit. These followers of Jesus, they were at that moment able to speak the word of God to people that they may have never spoken to before. All because the promise of the Father that was given for the Son to proclaim to them was now realized in the Spirit. He had come, and he had come upon them. And today... We celebrate that coming as members of Christ's church. However, we see that some misunderstand the role of the Spirit altogether. They don't recognize the significance of the signs that are produced in Acts chapter 2. As we confess in the creeds, the Holy Spirit is a member or a person of the Trinity, he is a part of the Godhead, just like the Father and the Son. He is God himself, fully co-equal with both Father and Son. We see today in the scriptures and throughout the scriptures that he is active and working. The day of Pentecost, yes, he appears on that day, but that is not the only time in which the Spirit appears and works. In fact... He's all over the place in the scriptures. He is a participatory person in the work of creation. As we see in Genesis chapter 1, it is the Spirit of God that is hovering over the face of the waters. In the Old Testament lesson for this morning, we see God place the Spirit upon Moses and the 70 elders. And once having the Spirit, they are actually able to prophesy. But in Acts chapter 2, the appearance of the Spirit is maybe just a little different because it brings about some wondrous signs from the apostles. Yes, the disciples, these followers of Jesus who had followed him for three long years, who had heard the words that he had to speak, the prophecies that he had to make, and the ones that he fulfilled himself, the promises that he had given to them, that he would die on the cross and three days later rise from the dead for their salvation. And yet then suddenly when the going gets tough, it's these men who flee from him in the garden of Gethsemane. These same men were the ones who locked themselves in a room 
after the resurrection because they were terrified. And remember, Peter, he's one of these guys that are here on the day of Pentecost. Remember him? He's the one who denied Jesus three times. Yes, these same men are the ones who missed the point time after time again as Jesus proclaimed to them the promises that were to come that he was going to fulfill. These are the same ones that missed that he was God as he proclaimed to them all of the things that they needed to know at the time in his miracles, in his parables, and in his teaching. And now... On the day of Pentecost, on the birth of the church, these same sacred coy men, they finally seem to find a backbone. And it's because of the Spirit. Suddenly, they begin to proclaim the mighty works of God. And more than that, they do so in the native language of those individuals that had come and resided in Jerusalem at that time. In fact... From all nations under heaven, the text tells us. And then to make it even better, if it wasn't good enough that they do that, Peter, Peter of all people, you remember Peter, not only did he deny Jesus three times, but more than that, Peter was constantly opening his mouth at the wrong time. He was speaking when he shouldn't have spoke, and he was saying the wrong things far too often. And now it is Peter who stands up, and preaches, along with the other disciples, the forgiveness of sins in the name of Christ crucified and risen. And he does it with these words of the prophet Joel. He does it with the words of King David. He preaches this beautiful sermon. And what results from that is equally as beautiful. In fact, it's not in our text for today, unfortunately, but the effects are massive and they are far-reaching. In verse 37 of chapter 2, now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. The Holy Spirit uses the words of Peter to cut these men and women to the heart that are hearing and they are brought to a place of repentance. And we know that because of the way in which they respond. They hear these words of Peter, this beautiful sermon that he preaches, these words from Joel. And they respond, well, then what are we supposed to do? Brothers, tell us, tell us what we're supposed to do. They're scared. They are terrified. They are petrified because of their sin. And so Peter does exactly what Peter needed to do, exactly what the Spirit enabled him to do. He proclaims the gospel. Now hear these words of Peter. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit also. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord God calls to himself. Repent. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus of Christ Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins. Guess what? That's exactly what happened. We know, because the text tells us a little later, that the Holy Spirit added 3,000 souls to his church that day. 3,000 people. That is massive for the kickoff of the church to begin and for Peter to come and for the Holy Spirit to come upon these men and for them to speak in tongues so that other people who do not speak their language can hear them, that's amazing. And then for Peter to get up and to give this message, this message of salvation, this message of repentance and forgiveness in Christ Jesus, that's something. But these men, all they were doing as the Spirit enabled them was sowing the seeds of the gospel. It is the Spirit that did the work. It was the Spirit that worked that word in the life of these 3,000 people. And they were welcomed into the family of God through faith 
and baptism on that day. This work of the Spirit continues even today. It continues in our own life as we too were brought into this faith family through the waters of baptism, as we were brought into the family of God as he adopted us. And it continues to work in our life each and every day as we are called to repentance and forgiveness. And it continues to work not only in our life, but throughout the world. Yes, this is the work of the Spirit. It's to work faith in the hearts of men. To call us, you and me, followers of Jesus, to trust in Jesus in all of his promise, promises. To receive the gift of righteousness that Christ himself earned with his sinless life. The life that he has given to us. The new life that he has given to us by his death and resurrection. The gift of forgiveness that is ours, that he earned for us by shedding his blood on a cross and by claiming victory over death in his resurrection. The gift of assurance that he has promised us that we will one day be with him and that our bodies too will be resurrected. All of these gifts and so much more that have been promised to us that have been realized in the work of Christ are a reality for us because of the Spirit. Because Christ has fulfilled his promise to lay that Spirit upon us. And that Spirit has come and worked the miracle of faith in our life. But that's not the end. The gift of the Spirit, that miracle, is not the end. Because the Holy Spirit dwells within us each and every day of our life, calling us to repentance and allowing us to hear the sweet words of the gospel, the sweet words of absolution that you are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit who strengthens our faith as we hear the words proclaimed and as we receive the sacrament in simple means of bread and wine for the forgiveness of our sins. Yes, it is the Holy Spirit who calls us to be a member of his body, the church, and to share this comforting message of Jesus Christ, both crucified and risen, with those around us. Yes, that's what we have been called to do by the Spirit. That's what the Spirit enables us to do, to make disciples, to make disciples that are going to gather together as we gather together for fellowship, for the breaking of bread, for prayer and worship, to make disciples who are going to not only gather together, but are going to grow in their relationship with Jesus and with one another through devotions, through the studying of God's word, through coming together for Bible study and for teaching and learning. Yes, the Holy Spirit enables us to go out into the world and be his hands and his feet and his mouthpiece that he might bring souls into his church. That's what we are called to do, to sow the seeds of the gospel, to make disciples who gather together, who grow in Jesus, and who go be his hands and feet. And so, brothers and sisters, may the wondrous signs of Pentecost, may the gift of the Holy Spirit that has been given to you be of great comfort and assurance to you that God does indeed keep his promises And yes, even more than that, he equips you. He equips you with all that you need to be his hands and his feet and his mouthpiece. May God grant that unto us all. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, may it guard and keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. At this time, we typically gather up our morning offering, and our offering is indeed an act of worship as we give a small portion back to God of all that he has given to us for him to use in his church for ministry and mission to take place, that we as the body of Christ can continue to make disciples as he has called us to do. There is several ways in which you can do that. You can drop your offering off here at the church Monday through Friday. 
9 a.m. to 2 p.m. You can even mail it directly to the church office. The second option is you can go to our website and use our electronic giving platform. It's very easy to do. Just click on the Give tab in the upper right-hand corner and follow the instructions on the screen. Finally, you can also give via text message. You can do that by texting the word GIVE, G-I-V-E, to 989-309-2496. I want to take just a minute to thank you, um, both members and guests and people who have been, uh, been viewing these feeds uh, and these worship services over these past several weeks. Thank you so much for your commitment to advance the gospel um, here in Hubbard Lake and around the world through your gifts. Uh, you have been faithful in that. Um, and, and we as leaders here at St. Paul um, are certainly encouraged by that um, as we continue to give God all the glory, thanks, and praise. At this time, uh, in giving God that glory, thanks, and praise, we do so with our voices through the singing of the offertory. Our Lord calls us to bring our prayers and supplications to him, and he promises that he will hear and answer according to his good and gracious will. And so now we take a few moments to pray for not only God's people, but for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, you have blessed us in love with the Savior to whom the nations cry, and in whom is forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Grant to us your Holy Spirit, the Comforter whom you have promised, that we and all who call upon his name shall be saved. Help us to treasure in our hearts your mercy and to give ourselves fully to your service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you delivered your word through Moses and the prophets and fulfilled your word in Christ. He was planted in death for our sins and raised up for our justification. And in him shall all the nations of the earth be united. Give us pastors who will preach this word faithfully, and church workers who are devoted to your service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised the thirsty will drink, and from the empty will flow forth rivers of living water. Help us to show forth in holy lives the fruits of the Spirit, to live with love toward our neighbor. Give us a servant's heart that doesn't seek our own way, but walks on the path of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised to make one people from the many. Take from us all pride, prejudice, and hate, that we may not hinder the cause of the gospel by our shame, but give welcome to all people in the name of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have ordered all things in heaven and on earth. Bless Donald, our president, Gretchen, our governor, the Congress of the United States, and all elected and appointed civil servants, that the rule of law may protect the weak, preserve life from conception to its natural end, and peace may reign for the benefit of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, have mercy and spare us. Put an end to the pandemic and restore the communities of the world to their common life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have given our nation the gift and heritage of freedom. It came at the cost of many lives on battlefields far and near. Receive our thanks for their sacrifice 
and give us the courage to preserve liberty in our own time and to use it honorably. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you breathe hope into the weary and renew your church by your grace. Bless newly planted congregations that they may endure. Guide established congregations that they may not lose heart. And build up our synod that our zeal for your kingdom may not flag, but flourish and prosper according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you carry the burdens of our lives into your hands. Deliver from illness and suffering all who cry to you for release. Hear us on behalf of the sick, the dying, and those who mourn. Answer your people, O Lord, and deliver them from their infirmities and their grief by your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, hear your people for the sake of him who loved us even to death and who lives to call us to himself, all who will be saved. You know what we need in those things that we should ask in your name. Grant them to us for the sake of our crucified, risen, and ascended Lord, the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give to you his peace. Amen. We close with our final hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today.
Thank you so much for joining us for worship today on the day of Pentecost, on the birthday of the church. We hope that you and your family are remaining healthy and safe during this time. Again, we want to remind you, if you were unaware, that um, starting today, we had our first in-person worship gathering, and that is going to continue um, throughout the summer, and, and hopefully um, we won't have to deal with any more pandemic issues. Um, and that takes place on Sunday mornings at 9.30, right here at St. Paul in Hubbard Lake. Again, if you are unable to join us for those in-person gatherings at this time, this online worship service is going to continue, um, and for now, it will remain on Sunday mornings at 9.30. A few announcements for this morning as it relates to things that are coming up. Um, St. Paul Golf is returning, and it is going to begin on June 4th. We are going to meet every first, third, and fifth Thursday of the month. Every first, third, and fifth Thursday of the month. And we are going to meet at White Pine National Golf Course, which is on the south end of Hubbard Lake. Um, all men and women are welcome. Um, it's nothing fancy. Uh, we don't have any prizes or anything like that. We just go out there and enjoy some good time of fun and fellowship um, and hitting the golf ball around. So we'd love for you to join us starting on June 4th. Also, um, hopefully you received a postcard in the mail within the last week or so um, that on June 7th, which is a week from today, we are going to be having a special voters meeting. That postcard outlined the agenda um, that is going to be taking place at that meeting. Um, and most of the agenda surrounds the, uh, the daycare that we are, are hoping to open and, and some of the details of that, uh, of that, um, uh, that venture. So please um, be aware of that. Um, again, if you haven't already in relation to that, um, that voters assembly, La this past Friday, a letter was sent out to everyone in the congregation um, explaining the proposal that is going to be made. Um, if you haven't received it, don't worry, you should be by the beginning of this next week. We are asking that you please read through that. That will hopefully answer a lot of questions, but of course, um, we will be going through that packet of information next Sunday as well. We would love for you to join us for that meeting um, so that you can have your voice heard um, and be able to participate um, in that vote if you are a voting member. Um, that's it for our announcements for, the t for today. Again, we hope that you have a blessed week, that the Lord continues to be with you and your family. And as always, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.